this evening, and uh, uh, we are looking forward to what God has in store for us. I just wanted to give you a quick update uh, on a couple of things. I appreciate um, Brother Barry, Sister Kinsey, Brother Jacob going with me today up to North Cove. We did go pray over the school and uh, just continue to remember them, um, you know, throughout the school year. Pray for all the schools, actually. But um, North Cove is one that's assigned to us to cover them in prayer. And uh, I just wanted to let you know that we did make our way up there this afternoon. Also, I talked to Brother Ken, and uh, he said that Brother Jim Walden, they would had several days of kind of setbacks. Um, but as of today, they are, uh, his, his uh, heart rate has come down into the 90s, so praise God for that, because uh, it's been like 140, 150s, and um, there's one more medication that they're going to try to wean him off of through the IV, and then once they get that done, they'll be able to take him out into a regular room. He is still extremely weak and um, having difficulty, um, or he's unable to raise his head, his hands, his feet, you know, so he's, he's still struggling, but he's been in ICU and extremely sedated for some time and uh, still having some confusion but uh, they're looking for you know, hopefully uh, greater improvements once he gets into a regular room and uh, they can start some physical therapy and stuff with him. So continue to remember Brother Walden in prayer, remember his family, pray for peace uh, for them during this time and uh, I just want to take a second to welcome our visitors. I know we do have some folks visiting with us tonight. We're not going to embarrass anybody, but if you would just stand, we just want to give you a, a, a round of applause and let you know how much we appreciate you guys being here. So all our visitors, please stand. So we appreciate you guys being here. If this is the first time that you're visiting with us, Sister Shelby, We'll be waiting on you after service. There's a first-timers table in the back, and we just want to bless you. Um, we want you just to open your heart up tonight and let God speak to you. But let's go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you for your goodness and for your mercy that endures forever. We thank you, Lord, uh, for all that you've done, all you're doing, and all you're going to do. And we trust you, God, as we enter into this time with you this evening that you will speak to our hearts and that you will strengthen us, you will encourage us through your word. That God, give us ears to hear and a heart to receive and let us not just be hearers, but let us be those that apply the word and become doers of the word. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Let's welcome Sister Dolores as she comes to receive tonight's offering. Good evening. Good to be back in the house of God. You know, I was thinking right before I came to church, uh, we should not take it for granted that we still have the freedom to come to church. That's right. It's getting harder and harder, and the government, a lot of them, not some, but some, is wanting to shut the doors. They don't like church, they don't like Christians, but that's the Antichrist spirit. And uh, we shouldn't take it for granted. We should count it a privilege. But all across the churches, they're saying, uh, some of the ministers has messaged me, the people couldn't stand it a few weeks back when the church doors wasn't open. But now they're opening and they're still not coming. So we need to pray against that lukewarm spirit. And what it is, it's released from the enemy in the end times. The last church in Revelations was the lukewarm spirit. And a lot of times it's hard to overcome that spirit because it just puts you in a state that you're not hot or cold. And God said, if you're not hot, if you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. So let's not take it for granted. And uh, praise God, it is time to take up our offering again. People say, well, I give and give. Until you give it into the kingdom of God, you not give if you give in the world. <laughs> Tonight, it's a kingdom of God. And so we're going to pray and bless the offering. And this side will go to the right. 
to the right, come back to the left. And once again, the online giving, we appreciate you so much. And they have it on the board up there, I think, how you can give. Father, I thank you. I praise your holy name. We do not want to take you for granted. God, we worship you. We thank you that you've allowed our church doors open for such a time as this. I ask blessings upon each and every one as they give into your kingdom. Multiply their money for the upbuilding of your kingdom in the name of Jesus. Everyone stand.
like it's jamming back here, church.
that we start telling. Amen. It says preach the word, not our opinions, not our ideas, but the word. We were talking today as we were going down to up to North Cove and uh, Sister Kenzie and, and Brother Barry, and Brother Jacob and I. And um, I think Sister Kenzie said, you know, well, when we quote the word, because Brother Barry was talking about how many passages of Scripture he used this morning and how he was picking at me the other day. He mentioned that to you guys. And uh, Sister Kenzie said, well, as long as it's the word, people can't argue with the word, you know. Uh, but it says somebody better preach the word as an official, which means you're appointed and you're anointed. You're a messenger, which is a mouthpiece. It says be ready. And when I saw that word ready, I heard in my spirit fast, immediate moving. When the time or the season, as Brother Barry was preaching this morning, is right. And even when it's not. Amen. you got to preach the word whether people like it or whether they don't. That's what it's telling us. It says, keep your sense of urgency or readiness, whether the opportunity seems favorable, whether it feels good to the flesh. Because I'm going to tell you, sometimes you can get up to preach and it feels good. It just feels right. When you guys are, are in it, you know, to win it and you're, amen, that's right, uh-huh, that feels good. But when you're just sitting there and maybe snoring off, nodding off once in a while, you know, you're playing What's that candy cane on your phone or something? You know, and I know what you're doing because Brother Barry and him signaling me from the front. Row four, middle section, candy cane. They're holding up signs. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. But it says, you know, when, when it feels good to the flesh, when it seems favorable, you got to preach the word. It says, or unfavorable, whether it's convenient or inconvenient, whether welcomed or unwelcomed. And, and this is kind of a comical situation. You know, it's not about somebody wanting to hear. It's about somebody needing to hear. Amen. I'll be honest with you. You guys can relate to this. How many of you have ever been out somewhere and, and somebody signals you that you zippers down? You don't want to hear that, but you need to hear that. Or ladies, you know, you come out, you're wearing a dress, and somebody tells you your dress is, you know, hung up in your hose or something. It's a terrible thing. You don't want to hear that, but you need to hear that. Amen? And I don't know why that. Just good examples. We can all relate to it because we've all been there and done that. Um, but it goes on and it says, uh, correct those who err in doctrine or behavior. It's not just people that are preaching a gospel that is it, that doesn't line up with the word. It's when people's behavior doesn't line up with the word. Amen. I'm telling you, if you love people, you're going to tell them the truth. Sister Darlene was telling me the other day she had saw something. You know, everybody's talking about the COVID nineteen stuff right now. We'll just keep it relevant to to here and now. And she said, it, it was a joke, you know, this lady, this woman asked her husband, said, honey, have I gained weight during the quarantine or during the pandemic? And he said, yes. And later on, uh, his death certificate said, cause of death, COVID-19. You know, um, not making light of it, but you know. Uh, but it goes on and it says, people that, uh, their behavior that it's not right. It says, warn those who sin, exhort and encourage those who are growing towards spiritual maturity with inexhaustible patience and faithful teaching. Verse 3, for the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine and accurate instruction that challenges them with God's truth. You see, people don't like to be challenged with the truth. People, I'm telling you, people will fuzz up at you Man, they'll fuzz up at you sometimes when you give them the truth. But the Bible tells us that the truth will force that response and it will make them free. You give them that opportunity. It goes on and it says, uh, but wanting to have their ears tickled with something pleasing, they will accumulate for themselves many teachers, one after another, chosen, specifically chosen, to satisfy their own desires and to support, support their errors that they hold. Sister Darlene and I were talking, you know, we, we've known in our lives and in ministry how folks that uh, they know that they're not doing right, but they'll try to find a select group, a select somebody that will tell them that they're okay where they are and they'll migrate to that. Amen? Yeah. And and that's exactly what it's talking about here. It says uh, they'll... they'll uh, 
choose these people to satisfy their own desires and to support the errors that they hold. And they'll turn their ears away from the truth and they'll wander off into myths and man-made fictions or lies and deception and will accept the unacceptable. They'll call right wrong and they'll call wrong right. They wander. They wander. Their mind, their mind begins to wander, W-O. Then their heart begins to wander, W-A. And the next thing you know, they're gone. And they're in a dangerous place because somebody failed to give them the truth. It's just how it works, guys. And it doesn't matter who you are. I want you to know God is no respecter of persons. Amen? But I want you to know the devil is no respecter of persons. Amen? Don't, don't think that you are above it. Do not think for one second that you are above the wander because you're not. You're just not. It says, but as for you, be clear-headed in every situation. Stay calm and cool and steady. In other words, stay in your position. We've been hearing about position, 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 and place, and position, you know. Stay in your position. Give no place, no ground, not even an inch. Endure every hardship without flinching. I thought about someone when they're striped, you know, somebody slaps somebody or you punch somebody and they, don't flinch, don't, don't bat your eyes, don't turn away. Even in the hard times. It says, do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill the duties or responsibilities of your ministry, of your calling, of your appointment, of your anointing. Not someone else's, of yours. Do what God has called you to do. Here we're reading about Timothy and Sister Dolores. I thought she was going there talking about the churches and revelations. Ephesus, the Ephesians. Uh, uh, the church of Ephesus was one of the churches listed. They had, uh, it says that they lost their first love. Exactly what she's talking about here tonight. People get in a lukewarm state. When you lose your first love, it's that you have... Found, you've fallen in love with something else. I'm going to tell you what that is called, brothers and sisters. That's called adultery. Adultery. When you fall in love with something else more than you are in love with God, that is adultery. And I want to tell you something. Adultery, and I don't care who's doing it, it's sin. It says we're exhorted to preach or expound the Word of God. We're instructed to preach or to proclaim the truth of Scripture. His Word brings life. His Word is light under our path. His Word brings hope. And His Word brings peace. And I'm telling you, the world is starving literally to death for hope and peace right now. They are chasing after every cat's tail that they can get a hold of, just trying to find some truth somewhere. And they're looking everywhere except for the right place. His word is truth. If we preach Christ cru crucified without compromise. And I say without compromise. Let me say it again, without compromise. There is no room for us to give up to the enemy. There's no room because people are dying and going to hell. I appreciate the move of God this morning, but I want you to know there's a message that we've got to tell people. It's that truth that will bring liberty to the captives. We preached it for some time that the truth forces a response. It'll cause us to either surrender to it or rebel. And whenever we give over to rebellion, we're given over to witchcraft. And when you begin to give over to witchcraft, you are opening yourself up to demonic forces. It's a very serious thing. You say, well, I, I don't think that can happen to me, Pastor Keith. I've been in ministry for 25 years, honey. I don't care how long you've been in ministry. If you're walking in rebellion, you ain't in Jesus. You just stand. In today's world, absolute truth is being refuted on all sides. The world says that there's nothing to it. But I want to tell you something. There are a lot of folks who claim to know Jesus 
who are denying the truth and the power in the Word of God. And the Bible says that some people will have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. I don't understand why people that are broken, people that are beaten down, people that are, 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 are uh, uh, you know, heavy hearted, people that are sick. I don't know why in the world they would rather believe what the world says. I don't know why they'd rather believe what the world says rather than what the Word says. It makes no sense to me. It doesn't add up. It's not good math. It's just not good math. I can't make it add up. It makes no sense. Whether convenient or not, in season, out of season, we got to be ready. We got to be prepared. We got to be passionate about the word that we preach, about the word that we give, the people that we reach out to. Whether we know them or whether we don't, we still got to be passionate about it. Sister Dolores shared the word with roughly 200 folks yesterday on the other side of the world. She only knew a couple of them. She only knew a couple of them. She said, it was hard for me to say just a couple of words. We all know that. <laughs> it was hard. When I opened up, it's hard. It's difficult as you're waiting for them to translate. But we got to be passionate about it. we got to be passionate not only with our words, but in our lives. And not only with our actions, but with our attitudes. I'm going to tell you something. You can say one thing, but if your actions show something else, what are people going to believe? Your actions. You know, the old saying, our actions speak louder than our words. Not only in our attitudes, but in our behaviors and our motives. Our motives have to be about preaching freedom and liberty through salvation to people. Through Christ. That's where we are. To preach the truth in love means that we compassionately are willing to correct people. I was talking to someone uh, recently about something and, and, and they were telling me, you know, they were giving me their justification for their behaviors. And I, out of compassion and out of love and because I'm passionate about people, I had to correct them. But they received it. And they responded to it. And they submitted to it. And I see that they've grown from it. And that's what truth will do for us, guys. But you know what? It won't only do that for us. It will do that for other people when we share it. Truth. Truth. It might require us to follow scriptural guidelines. Like Sister Kenzie was saying. You know, Brother Barry, you may get up here one day to preach. You, Brother Tanner, Brother Jake, and Sister Dolores, somebody. Y'all may get up here, Brother Patrick, and all you give is Scripture. You don't even say anything else, just Scripture. Turn to 1 John this, turn to Romans this, turn to Acts that. And it just preaches the whole message. That's all right. That's all right. The Word will stand alone, church. It'll stand alone. Amen. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that this living, breathing document, when it waves through my spirit, it's like breathing the life of God into me. It'll stand alone. Doesn't need my opinion. The word is used to encourage and to exhort the body of Christ. But it should always reflect the character of Christ. We preached a few weeks ago about reflect, being a reflection of the Father. Who do we see in the mirror? Are we reflecting the character of Christ? What would Jesus do? We mentioned this the other Wednesday night, I think. What would Jesus do? Are we reflecting the image of Christ? Are we letting people see Jesus in us? Are we showing people grace and are we showing people mercy? In our scripture today, Paul was writing to Timothy. And you guys know the relationship here. Paul looked at Timothy like he was his own son. Timothy had been traveling in ministry with him. And then when they went to Ephesus, Timothy took over as pastor there. And Paul went about his business. And Paul wrote him letters from prison. But Timothy had written to Paul at one point. See, when, when, when Timothy first took over, I want you to know it was good. It was good. That's what you call the honeymoon phase. You can ask any pastor, anybody that's been in ministry, my father-in-law used to talk about it all the time. 
his gift and his anointing, besides his preaching, was that he could go in and build a church up. He, I've seen him take church after church after church. He'd go in, Sister Peggy knows that you know they'd have 30, and the next thing you know, they got 200. And it'd last a couple of years. Some of them would hang on, then it'd start a drift. You know, she's been in ministry, she knows how to eat. it. That honeymoon phase is sweet. Oh, we're so glad you're here. We love you. We love your family. And then a couple of years down the road, do you know what he did? You know what she did. You know what their kids are doing. And that critical spirit starts to get a hold of people. I'm praying for you, Pastor. I'm praying for you, First Lady. You know what she did. I don't think there's nothing wrong with her. She's just pushing that pony for attention. I told her this morning she kept riding that thing was going to start feeding that oats and hay. Her and Sister Christy was wanting to go to the Derby. And she left her pony parked at home. Paul was talking to Timothy. He said, you got to hang on, boy. you got to hang on. You know, marriage... There's a honeymoon phase in marriage. I'll use y'all. I'm going to pick on y'all. We were coming to church tonight. I'm not going to tell you everything. Jack is like, oh God. And we were talking about something and Kenzie started to say something. And Jack said, don't talk about that. There's a honeymoon phase where you get to know one another. You know, you 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 do date. <laughs> and then you've been married and you got twenty five kids and you're like, you do what night? <laughs> you, you 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 thank your spouse for being so romantic and that's when you pass each other in the hallway going from this meeting to that meeting or whatever. You just brush fingertips. Or, you know. But there's a honeymoon phase even in ministry. And that's what Timothy had to start with. But then things started going a little haywire. And if you read on about the church of Ephesus, Sister Dolores was talking when she was up here exhorting you guys before we took the offering, she said, we need not take our liberty to worship for granted. You know, we've done that before. The church, not just Live March Tabernacle, the church worldwide. We've done that before, nationwide. You know what happened at the church of Ephesus? Leadership came in into the Roman government and they were banned from corporate worship. Hmm, imagine anybody having that idea. And it said that they used fear tactics to keep them from gathering together. Are y'all hearing me? And it said that it tried, they were trying to make them pull back from their faith. And guess what happened to a lot of people in the church? Y'all listen to me, Facebook family. Guess what happened to a lot of people in the church? They fell away. And they didn't just fall away. They fell away and they went back to old temples. They went back to old idols. They went back to old ways. Somebody better listen because I'm about to preach. You say, well, I don't think y'all say that. I didn't. I didn't. I did. It's right there. Paul told Timothy, you better stand strong, boy. In the good times, enjoy it, man. Enjoy it. But in the bad times, you better stand. You better hold on. If George Jones and Tammy Wynette used to sing a song. We gotta hold. Done. 
Some of y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. That's a good song. Oh, that might preach, I don't know. But it goes on and it says that the Roman government started wreaking havoc in the lives of countless believers. And you got to understand that Ephesus is one of the most pagan cities. Christians who lived in Ephesus often endured great persecution. I want you to know there are people all over the world that are being persecuted because of their faith. Sister Dolores was concerned that the message that she preached to the women of India that you know, God don't allow it to bring them under some kind of persecution. You know, in China, people are being persecuted because of their faith. In California, right now, here in the United States, people are being persecuted because of their faith. They're being banned from corporate worship. Do you hear what I'm telling you? They're being told that they can't, but revival is breaking out because they can. Amen? In Portland, people are being persecuted because of their faith. Oh, you're risking lives. You're risking lives. No, they're out there saving lives and they're baptizing people by the hundreds in the river right now. They're standing on the creek banks. He said, look at all the havoc that's taking place. They're tearing down the cities. Look at all the good that's taking place. People are getting saved and accepting Jesus and they're on fire for God. And they're being baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. This was a trick of the devil. The enemy wanted to make them think that their faith was non essential. I want to say again that is a trick of the devil. That is demonic influence. And I don't care who you are, I'll tell you the same thing. It's demonic influence. That's the truth. As a result of these hard times, the Bible says that many believers in Ephesus died for their faith. Sister Dolores said again tonight, how many of us have given as unto the Lord? How many of us have stood so strong and so firmly on something that we've had to pay that kind of price? You know what it's called when people withdraw from the church and go back to their old temples and their old ways? Pentecostals have a, a phrase, a word that we've used throughout the decades. It's called backsliding. These hardships, these disappointments, they were mounting up left and right. The rebellion was rampant even among church leadership. Y'all remember a few weeks ago when the Lord gave us a word about what an abomination was? Do you remember what the seventh thing was? He said there's six things and the seventh thing is an abomination unto God. Do you remember what it was? Causing discord among the brethren. When you try to sneak around and cause discord. You know who is the worst for that? Leadership. What do you think Satan's role was in heaven? He led worship. I've heard more churches that have had difficulty and splits over the worship leader and the pastor arguing. You guys don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Praise God. We solved that problem. Woo! <laughs> Y'all ain't never thought about that again. <laughs> Me either. You don't have to worry about the pastor and the worship leader fussing amongst each other. Now you might you might hear me, you might see me discussing that role with this role. Where do we go? Do we stay over there? Do we come over here? Do we stay over here or go over there? 
You might see some of that. But that's all right. That's that's on him. Where he leads, we'll follow. Amen. But Timothy had written a letter to Paul about all these issues, and he said, "Dude, I need some help. I need some advice. I don't know. I just don't know. These people are just wilder than spider up in here. I've preached and I've stood and I've loved them and I've." tried to help them and I've tried to correct them and I've tried to instruct them and they won't listen to a thing that I say and they're rebellious bunch of witches because that's what rebellion is bunch of sorcerers running around causing trouble just stirring up junk just stirring up stuff all the time running their mouth they talk, 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 talk Ain't never got nothing good to say. Everything's negative. Committing all kinds of sin. You know, church was doing really good. We had this many. And now we're down to this many. Because people are running back. They're going back to the old ways. And I've been calling them. I rode my camel over to Jimmy John's house the other day. I wore two pair of sandals out. Doing street ministry. And they don't care. I've invited all these people and nobody showed up. Timothy was tore up. And he wrote to Paul. He said, you've got to help me. And Paul said, all right, I'm going to help you. He said, you've got to remember something. You've got to remember who you are in Christ. Who you are. Who you are. Who you are. Do you know who you know? Who they are in Christ. Do you know the only person that you really know who they are in Christ is? It's you. You've got to remember who you are in Christ. And he told Timothy that. He said, you got to remember that your responsibility, your role, your position as pastor is to be instant in season and out of season. When it's comfortable to the flesh and when it's uncomfortable to the flesh. When the going is good and when the going gets tough. You've got to stand firm. You've got to give the truth. Because these people that are running around, they're wanting somebody to tickle their ears and tell them they're okay where they are. That ain't going to work for you, boy. He said, you never saw me do that. You traveled with me. You know better than that. You can't do that. Timothy's, Timothy's post was the pulpit of his church. And that's where he maintained leadership. That's where he shared vision. That's where he gave rebuke. And that's where he taught. And that's where he preached. And that's where he brought correction. And remember, true godly correction is always intended to build up and not to tear down. That's a surefire way that you can tell if something is inspired by the Holy Spirit or if it's flesh. It's supposed to build you up. It's to make you stronger. The word instant in the Greek is epistemi. Epi is stimmy. Epi means upon. Stimmy means to stand. You stand in your position. You stand. Another word. means stand upon. Take a firm stand, a hard position. I looked another reference up and it said knowledge or wisdom. Eukiros is in season. It means pleasurable times. Akiros is out of season. It means bad times. I'm not going to tell you that it's going to always smell like roses. 
I'm not going to tell you that it's always going to taste good. I'm not going to tell you that it's going to always feel good. I'm not going to tell you it's going to always be easy. But what I will tell you is that there's always something better coming. There's always something better coming. I used to hear people say, well, the, devil, the Lord must really be getting ready to do something good for the devil to be coming against you this hard. But I'm going to tell you something that's actually true to that. How many of you saw the, the hard rains that we've had the past couple of days? My driveway looks like a four-wheel track at Mad Mama's or something. But I'm going to tell you something. I knew as hard as it was raining that sooner or later that rain was going to stop. I knew sooner or later. One night we were up here two or three years ago. The ladies were doing something and they called for a tornado. And they said, it's coming over Moffat Hill. That's what we heard. Oh, Lord, that's where we are. So we go in a room. We begin to pray. I don't know if it came over or not. It didn't touch us. It didn't touch us. I don't know if it came over or not. What I do know is that it didn't touch us. I don't know what your hard times look like sometimes. But what I do know is what your good times can look like. I don't know what kind of situations or circumstances you find yourself in. I don't know if you were drug into them or if you walked into them willingly. Because sometimes, guys, that's what we do. We make those choices, we make those decisions, and we find ourselves falling in harder times that we have allowed to come on us. Because we open that door. We open that door instead of taking a firm stand. And when we open the door, we give up ground to the enemy. Paul told Timothy, don't you dare open that door to the enemy. When he knocks, don't you open that door to him. He said, you stand strong in the knowledge that you have. You remember and you use wisdom based on the knowledge that you have. Who you are in Christ even though times got tough, Timothy, he may have felt like shunning his responsibility. That may be why he was writing to, to Paul. He may have been saying, look, you go ahead and send Tanner down here because I'm about to give this thing up. I'm jumping on my camel. I need vacation. I'm gone to the house. Gone to the hut. You're going to have to get somebody in here. And Paul said, stop it. Stop it. Y'all know some of y'all I've talked to you like that before. Because I love you. I said, stop it. You know better than that. Quit. And y'all have talked to me that way. That's all right. You've had to catch me when I was in a fit of rage. Ready to jump in my car and drive to the house. Because we're human. And man, that flesh is strong. It'll pull on you. I was watching some crazy reality show yesterday. I just set channel surfing. And this mama got mad at her daughter because her daughter snuck out to see this little boy that she wasn't supposed to be talking to. She just went out there and grabbed that girl by the hair of the head. And pulled her to the car. I thought, boy, she ain't trouble. And so they don't know nothing about that. That's obvious. In season and out of season. He said, take a firm stand and resolve to stay at your post. Regardless of whether times are good or whether they're bad, that is your post. It's your place of responsibility. So dig your heels in, take a firm stand, and resolve that you are going to be faithful. What is faithful? Well, faithful means that you can trust Him and He can trust you. You don't have to worry about nothing. That's what faithfulness is. What is faithfulness for the Lord? 
knowing that we can trust Him and that He can trust us. And no matter what circumstances and what situations come our way, whether it's really good, and we all love those good times, don't we? Amen. We all give God a glad praise for good times. You know, thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. But we also have to understand that He has to trust us when He allows us to go through difficult times. Because without those difficult times, guys, people are not going to be able to see Him work. You think about Job. The Bible says he was a righteous man. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. People say, there ain't never been one perfect man you ain't read the Bible. Sorry. Read it for yourself. And the devil came against him. Some terrible things happened to him. Would any of you like to trade places with him for just a minute? Uh-uh. Me neither. The story is horrible. His best friends turning their backs on him, telling him that's his fault. His wife coming in and just saying, you're just a big dummy. We've lost everything. She might have been mad about the money. Who knows? We've lost everything. I can't go buy my new sandals and my new camel coat. We can't even afford nothing. The house is gone. Livestock's gone. Children's gone. We have nothing. Won't you just curse God and say, I've had enough. And what did Job tell her? You talk like a foolish woman. You're talking foolish. I'm going to tell you something. It's foolishness to throw up your hands and quit on a God that has been so good and so faithful to you. It's foolishness. And that's exactly what the enemy will try to get you to do. He'll try to fool you. To go back to your old ways, to your old idols, to your old temples. I say stand firm. And this was just the word that Timothy needed to hear to encourage him to stand, to be brave, to remain faithful to his assignment. He had to receive correction because it was correction. His struggles eventually passed. The Bible says it, you know, it teaches us that he would he, he became a respected leader in the in the among the Christians in the region. Actually ended up losing his life because he went out as they were having celebration against false gods and an angry mob didn't like the truth. And they beat him up right down the road, and killed him. The world's not going to like the truth, but it's because they don't understand it. They don't like the fact that you guys are saying, look, I realize you don't get where I'm coming from, but this is my heart, and I need it. I need to be in His presence because He matters to me. He's everything to me because I was everything to Him. Timothy stayed at his post to the end. I believe it was around 30 something, maybe 34 years, something like that. 24, 34 years. Long time. What kind of season are you in right now, guys? Is it a happy season or is it a heavy season? Are you having some hard times? And those, those good times are really good. And they make it all worth it. But we got to remember to keep God first even in those good times. we got to keep God first even whenever it doesn't feel like we need Him. we got to keep Him first because we absolutely want Him. 
And if he's first in our life, it'll show. It'll show by our actions. But what are you going to do in the hard times? Are you going to be as faithful? Are you going to be as steadfast? Or are you going to throw up your hands and go back to something else? Take Paul's words to Timothy. And apply it to yourself. It's not the time to run in fear that God has not given you. It's the time to stand up, to stand firm and walk in peace in the comfort that only He can provide. I promise you the bad times will eventually pass. This too shall pass. Aren't you thankful? This too shall pass. How many of you, just by show of hands, so everybody knows that we're not in this thing alone, how many of you have had situations in your life where you felt like, God, I just don't think I can make it through this? We have. But it passed. And things got better again. Because it's who we serve. They may not have gotten better the same, but they got better again. Storm clouds never last. Sooner or later the sun comes out. What a pity it would be if you gave up and you sacrificed everything that you had stood so long for when your answer was just around the corner. How sad that would be. But guys, only you can do your part. Whatever your part is, whatever your position is, only you can do it. I can't do my mom's part like she can. She can't do my part like I can. Because she's been appointed and anointed for a work and I've been appointed and anointed for a work. It's not to say that God won't use other people, but it won't be the same. say it out loud but we say Lord I receive this word tonight for my strength strength in my life I receive your promise that even though right now it may feel like I'm in a hard time a difficult time I know that you're going to be with me I know you're with me I'm standing firm. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving in. And then say, you've called me, God, to do something great for you. My brother Barry was preaching this morning. You've got a plan for me and a hope for a future. And I believe that. And I receive that. I'm not going to let the devil or my circumstances chase me away from what, where, or who I need to be. I'm not going to do it. My mind's made up. The Bible tells us to pull down strongholds. And that's those thoughts and those evil, wicked imaginations that try to say, hey, I'm right and this is wrong. When the enemy tries to get you to run away from God, and run away from His presence. I want you to know that's a stronghold trying to take root in your heart, in your mind. You say, but Pastor, it's been really hard this season. I know. I know. But it's going to pass. And when it does, I can promise you this, that God's Word will not fail. And when He said He'll work all things for our good, I want you to know that He will use every trial to make you stronger. You'll be stronger for it. You'll be wiser and you'll be better equipped for that future that He has in store for you. We've all had to make difficult decisions in our life. 
but when they were based on the word, I can assure you they were the right decision. Wherever you are, I want you to know that that ground is your responsibility. It's your role. I've said many times, you know, those of you that have children, God gave you your children as a blessing, not a burden. They're your responsibility. That's your role. If you have told some of our leadership, hey, I'll teach a class, I'll do this, I'll do that, that's your role, that's your responsibility. You guys that are up here, this is your role. It's your responsibility to be faithful to it. I wonder if you'd say in your heart, I confess with my mouth, I believe Jesus is my Lord. And I'm not moving from the place that you've called me. I'm not moving. There's an old song, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the water. I shall not be moved. I will not be moved out of my place. Because this is my position. And God is faithful. This is my ground. This can be your declaration to see. That's your choice. Just like you chose to come here tonight, you can make that decision. Here tonight, he may come back for us 
you know, individually at separate times. I want to make sure that we're ready. That's my role. When he said he's coming back to our church without spot or blemish, that's what the altars were full this morning. But you know what? If they needed to be full again tonight, that would be fantastic. It'd be all right. It'd be all right. Sister Kinsey starts to play in positions, raise ten, whatever. Give me strength, Lord. If you don't think the devil will come into your life and tear you out of the park, he's doing everything he can to destroy my marriage. And I ain't going to dig my heels in and I ain't going to fight. He is not going to win my marriage because I want my wife and I want my wife back. I want to fight him tooth and nail. So, devil, I, I bind you to the depths of hell. Take your little demons and go back to hell and stay there and leave my marriage alone. Just pray for us, please. Say he's being transparent with you guys tonight. And he's saying this is the rough place that I'm in. You say, well, that doesn't affect me, but it does, because that's a part of your body. And he's being as open and as honest as he knows how to be. Do something that's equally as hard or hurtful, or maybe even the same thing. There's a place that you can go, and you just throw it away. You throw it off. You don't have to carry it. You came in here tonight carrying that heaviness. Jesus is calling. Let's call your name right now. Oh, come. 
appreciate him being here tonight. I'm going to ask you if you would to come and give us an upbeat something and then close us in prayer tonight. Would you? See, I got to tell on you, brother, because Sister Kitten would get mad at me. He was talking to Sister Gail. Sister Kitten this morning I had me to confess her. Her, uh, she was talking to somebody in Mr. Birthday song the other day. Let's give Brother Howard a hand tonight. Aren't you glad he's here? Appreciate him. God bless each and every one of you. Don't forget Wednesday night we have a special speaker who is going to be here from the uh, Pregnancy Care Center. And, and we want each and every one of you to come. If you know somebody that might need these services or, uh, uh, you know, that maybe would be interested in, in volunteering or helping or giving to that uh Association, please have them to show up here Wednesday night. God bless you. You want something upbeat? I guess I can do. Uh, there's going to be a meeting in the air mixed with all flowers.